Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of settling for mediocre are over. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to Project Relationship. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. I'm Ken Hamilton. And we're going to be talking about transparency tonight. And full transparency, I have no idea what that means. Because <laughs> about 20 minutes ago, Ken said, you want to spend 20 minutes talking about transparency? And I thought he was saying that we should just talk about it. But then there was a microphone, which told me that you meant we're gonna we should talk record about it where an other episode. Can hear it. Okay, yes. excellent. <clears throat> so what do you want to talk about? Well, we talked about shame and secrecy um, a while back. And I have found for myself, in my experience, secrecy can be very slippery. You have, you have said, so do you keep secrets. I'm like, I'm not trying to keep secrets, but it gets very slippery. And I'm, I have trouble saying all the things. And I have, you used the word transparency today. And I thought, oh, transparency is like the, the positive it's not the positive version. It's a positive concept that opposes the concept of secrecy. They can't both exist in the same place. So rather than looking at my secret keeping and trying to find ways to avoid it, if I look at transparency and say, be transparent, the concept of secrecy kind of gets just shoved to the side. Um, so and I, I find that very useful. Okay, so I'm interested. You so you brought this to me as a topic idea, and I'm all for it because I am definitely pro transparency. Mm -hmm. um, what the heck does that mean? What does it mean to be transparent? Because I re I do remember what you're saying. I I think one of our very first exchanges, our f very first early exchanges, was. Um, you woke me up, I was sleeping by a fire and you woke me up and I had been having a dream. And right. I said, in a half stupor, I said, you're a secret keeper. Yeah. And it was prescient. It was probably yeah. the most prescient I have ever and been. And I had no idea what you were talking about. Right. It was, moment. it felt like it was just part of my dream. And then over the ensuing next, you know, what, I don't know, two years, three years, we came to learn a lot about what that meant yeah. together, what it meant that you from my perspective at least, were a secret keeper. And I have always endeavored to be very transparent. I think it came from being raised by secret keepers. Mm. Um, my parents valued their privacy highly. And I value privacy, but one of the things, well, a couple of very, very important things that they kept private were actually secrets. They were family secrets. They were family secrets about sexual abuse. Not that my parents sexually abused me. They did not. But there was sexual abuse that had happened um, to my mother, to me. Um, and there were some secrets around that. Then there was also secrecy about my mother's um, chronic and terminal illness. That was not something that was openly discussed. It was something she didn't want to be discussed. So I grew up in this atmosphere where secrecy was really painful and I didn't like it, so I wanted transparency, but wow, I have found myself in relationship yes. after relationship where yep. transparency hasn't been um, the norm for the for my partner or partners. And, so and you, what does it mean to you? Yeah, what so it, you you called that out in that that stuporous way, and and I was I was like stunned. I didn't know what it meant because I wasn't aware that I kept secrets. And over the years, I it has caught me by surprise over and over because I'm not, I don't think I'm keeping secrets. And then something comes up and you're like, why did you keep that from me? It's like, I didn't keep it from you. I didn't think to say it. And there's like a world of psychology we could dig into in that. Okay, so I'm hearing that relevancy, so transparency is about sharing things, right? Yes. But 
I don't want you to have to say everything to me. You really don't. <laughs> like that would just take a long time. <laughs> and be really dull. <laughs> um, but I also, I mean, and I don't want to say everything to you. I, I want to, and I want, so we both want privacy, but we also want to know what is relevant and like, mm -hmm. and pertinent to our situation. Right. We want that information to be shared and we want it to be shared, I think, at, at a time that is um, beneficial. In other words, yes. sharing something after it's already caused pain uh, huh. little, is <laughs> is not beneficial. Still good, you know. I mean, but it's not that. But it doesn't have the benefit of having gotten ahead of it. Transparency, yeah. right? So, right now, I'm thinking transparency is like the. Um, it's like a way of viewing my own experience. If I, if I view my own experience, if I'm going over my own experience and, and thinking about how do I share this with you in a way that's relevant and um, keeps in mind the agreements that we have with each other. And um, so in other words, so we have some agreements to share particular things and we might have some agreements that we don't want to share particular things. Yep. I don't always want to know everything about what you're doing. You right. have things, you have parts of your life that I'm like, you know, I would actually rather you just kept that to yourself because yep. it doesn't involve me. That's your life. And I'm happy for you to bring it to me if it's particularly problematic, but it just doesn't, right. or if you're experiencing particular joy around it even, but I don't, I just don't feel a need to be involved in that part of so your life. So the relevance is is important. Um, full transparency. Uh, as so, here's how I'm using the word transparency, and I'm going to get a little bit sort of poetic imagery for a minute. So you are a very present person of yourself. You don't have a lot of um, in in your relationship with me. You don't have much in the way of personas, veils that you leave in front of yourself. Uh, you're just you. I have some that, uh, that sometimes pop up and that leaves you. And, and I imagine that you were these days than there were. Yes. Earlier. Luckily I, and I'm, I'm working on them all the time, but they're still there. Yeah. And when they come up, I imagine that you can see through them or that you know me and you know the stuff that's behind mm. them. You don't, you can't. So transparency is actually taking those personas and making them transparent. Like I'm going to acknowledge them. There they are. Okay, but great. And here's what's on the other side of it for you to see. Relevance is like a secondary issue. I was like, okay, I'm going to make it transparent. Now I need to apply nuance to what I share to make sure I'm sharing things that are relevant to us in the moment, to you in your life. Okay, so that I, I have something I want to add to that then. Mm. Something that has come up over and over for us is that you will sometimes um, obscure a detail or not share something. And when we finally get down to it, like when, when I've poked around and I'm like, are, I think there's something uh -huh. that I need, some piece of information, and we finally get to it, what we find is, it's not that you were hiding it from me. You were hiding it from you. Oh, good point. You didn't even know. Yes. It's so that's mm -hmm. interesting because in order for it to become known to you, to stick with the visual imagery, you'd actually need for it to be opaque. You need it to become visible. Yes. And then we use yes. the word transparency to talk about making it. So if it's a part of you, you yep. want to make it visible to you first, and then you can make it visible to me right. by clearing that veil. Yes. Okay, we're deep in the imagery now, but... Uh. I, yeah, I've it's... been struck by how many times we've gotten caught in that. And it, it's, it has certainly worked the other way too. Yeah. Um, I have absolutely been like, Oh, okay. I blindsided myself. Yep. I didn't realize that I was, that I had this, this, this aspect of me. I had this secret or whatever. I didn't even realize that I buried it so deep that I couldn't even share it with myself. I wasn't aware. And therefore, I couldn't share it with you. Right. It does seem like it happens more in the reverse direction for us. I think it does. Um, I think that I have more um, little 
more veils, more personas, more more times that I do that than you do. So it happens more from my side. And I'm, I'm struck now, having heard you say that, on how visual the language around this is. It's transparency, blindsided, um, things yeah. that I, I don't know that it means anything in particular. I just noticed it right now. Well, um, so humans are quite visual creatures in general. Mm -hmm. And um, I wonder whether if we if we experienced visual um, a lack of visual stimuli due to physical disability or temporary disability, what, whatever it is, I wonder if we would change that language. I wonder. It's an interesting. And I know that you know there are people with. Um... Is it called aphantasia? Aphantasia. Aphantasia. So aphantasia, Ooh. where you cannot actually imagine the you don't you don't, you don't have visualize. Visual yeah, yeah in, internally there, and it does seem like it it has quite an impact on how you experience the world and how yeah. you communicate with the world. Um, yeah, that's an interesting thing. Yeah. So when we're talking about transparency, I think of my need to share. Um, I, I tend to err on the side of oversharing. So what do we do with that in the question of transparency? Because I have had people say that they felt like I overshare. And so I, I've worked on that. I've worked on what does it mean? I think it's context dependent. Well, certainly. Um, um, I mean, it, communication always is. Uh, and that I, I, I have many questions about that. Most of them for the the people who are um, experiencing that as oversharing. Um, I have found your level of communication to be um, inspirational to me. To to discover how much there actually is to talk about about your experience reminds me that there is so much to talk about about my experience because a lot of times I don't say things because I feel like there's nothing to say. And so that sounds like um, a sort of psychological structure mm -hmm. to me. You have an inner world that is extremely um, present mm -hmm. for you. I yes. do as well, but I externalize it. I, I, I talk about my inner world in order to process it. Whereas you seem to feel about it just internally. You seem to feel about your inner world rather than process it out loud. And those that, two differences have left us feeling imbalanced, I think, yes. around transparency and around how just how visible we make our inner experience to yes. each other. And I, my experience of my inner world and imagining versus you know, keeping it internal versus sharing it. Um, I don't have your experience verbalizing what's my inner world. And seeing you do it helps me realize that I can. But I grew up around people who didn't do that, who didn't share it. So mm. I didn't. So I didn't have the experience. And now that I, I see the value in it all the time. And I, I never feel like it's oversharing, um, even if I, even if I hear you talking about the same thing over and over again. Every time you talk about it, it's a little bit different, and there's a little bit of information in there. And the, this, well, the access I get to you enhances my experience of our relationship, and I would like to provide you with the same experience. And I know that I don't. So that's why I wanted to talk about transparency tonight. As I heard that word today, I was like that. That's how I can start clearing more of those blocks is by thinking about it that way. So in other words, rather than thinking, don't keep secrets. Yes. Instead of that, you're you're going to you're going to think about this Enhance as Enhance my transparency. Okay. Pursue transparency. I appreciate that. And I, so I, I think it's funny that I immediately went to what's relevant because I don't want to know every detail of your job. <laughs> DevOps is not my jam. No, uh, you don't want to know. But, but, so, so you hear that and you're like, oh, please filter some. <laughs> little, I, there's well, things I don't want to know. And, and I also sense. don't, I, 
we have a busy and complicated oh, life. Oh, that is true. And, and we don't have time. And you process a little slower than I do. Ooh, a little slower. <laughs> so it, a yeah. conversation with you sometimes takes a while. Yep. A conversation that I, I think, this will be 20 minutes, half an hour, can turn into three or four yep. hours pretty and easily. I have a, I'm a much less organized thinker than you are, so describing my world can be very long process. So what I work on in those moments is being present for your descriptions and how they come out piecemeal. And sometimes I hear you say something like, hang on, I need to figure out how to present this information. And I think, why? Don't worry about it. Just say it. It's fine. And so when you're yeah. saying transparency, I would say, yeah, go for it. Just just start sharing rather mm -hmm. than yes. try to get it right. Because when you're crafting that, that's yeah. like crafting a narrative. Yeah. And that feels different to me. I like when you craft a narrative, but it it doesn't feel the same as when you just share with me spontaneously. Yeah. When you share with me what your memories of the day are or what's going on for you or... The concepts of improv seem to come up every time I think about relationships. So rather than script the story, just step into it, start talking. Okay, so follow your happens. foot. Follow your foot, exactly. Or your, or your mouth or whatever. Yes, and, <laughs> and that the transparency is about that. Yes, stop trying to paint a picture and just let the picture come out. And so this involves a lot of trust. Yeah, it does. I forget sometimes how much, um, it's funny because I think of myself as having trust issues. I conceptualize myself that way. Mm -hmm. So I'll bring that to you and I'll say like, so I'm, I know I'm having trouble trusting right now. So here's how I would like to organize this conversation so that I feel safe to have it. Yeah. You come to me and it appears that you trust. You appear to have this, <laughs> this boy-like innocent trust but then you hide stuff yeah. which tells me that you don't trust me but that begs the question what is it that you don't trust me to do what is it that you're afraid of and that is not a question that i could answer right in this moment because of my slow processing and we don't have that much time in the podcast but um that's a sneaky move he just pulled on you all. Yes. So, you know. <laughs> so, okay, transparency. Follow my foot right off the top of my head. What am I afraid of? What am I yeah. protecting? Um, uh, somebody who's sure he's going to be told he's wrong. Mm. Um, that I'm going to tell about my experience. And it's going to be very obvious, even to me, that the story I just told is false. And that I don't know what I'm talking about. And so I I try to craft that story and make it make sense. I don't make sense. Oh, I want, um, ha, I don't trust you to uh, maintain the illusion of myself as someone who makes sense. Oh, yeah, because I'm not going to do I that. And I can't That's trust true. you to do that. And I don't That's want true. you to do that except for the part of me that does. Right. The little boy who's just like, could you just believe in me? Yeah, but you're 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 so wrong. And here's the thing: you're so wrong, you might hurt someone. Yeah. And he doesn't know that, and so he has hurt a lot of people. And I don't want to do that anymore. But he's still okay. In there so protecting. let's make this very real. All then, right. Because I think it might sound obscure. We've had a okay. million conversations. Um, other people haven't been a part of. So, the kind of the kind of moment you're talking about is actually pretty simple. You um, you have an experience. You go on, go for a walk in the park with someone, and you come home, and you go to start telling me about it, and I can sort of hear this hesitation, mm -hmm. and then like the sentence will just stop. You'll say half a sentence or one sentence, and then stop. Yeah. And then I hear you start again, like many minutes later, thirty minutes, forty mm -hmm. minutes go by, yeah. and you'll start again trying to share just a story about your day. And I hear you trying to like, and you'll even say, well, I don't know which way to organize this. How should I tell you about this? Should it be chronological <laughs> or should it be? Yeah. And I right. think, um, what if you just talk? It's yeah. fine. It doesn't have to make sense. I wonder if there's a reason why you think I need you to make sense all the time. 
um, the reason that there is predates you by quite a bit, like from when I was little, little. Who told you you had to make sense? Mm. Whose voice is that? Um, possibly Leonard Nimoy's. Oh, okay. I Spock. idolized Mr. Spock, Spock was... as a child. Okay. And in uh, and I think Leonard Nimoy is amazing. He was an amazing person who did a lot of great things. That character, I think, I used badly for my own purposes. Why? So Mr. Because, Spock's, because... Mr., Mr. Spock's primary move in the world, right, is to... Logic. Not Think. feel. Not feel. And to think. And I am, Or even if he had a feeling, to have it be irrelevant to his decision-making process. Yeah, so I tried that. For how many years, do you think? All of them, until I was at least 40, 44, maybe? What do you think? Well... 48, 52? <laughs> um, you were definitely, definitely um, past 43. Yes. Yeah. I remember thinking that you were so much like me in the early mm. stages. I love falling in love. Falling in love's the best. <laughs> in in that falling in love moment, when you can believe that image that you're painting of the person. I wanted so much to be like you in so, that way because you are a thinker. You're a thinker. You're logical. You had those skills that I wanted. I have internal have. consistency in general. Oh, yeah. Not when I am all complex and a mess, sure. for sure. But I do. But you have something I do not. You have the capacity to make value-based decisions on your feelings. I wish I had that. It's that's not. Yeah, it's a <laughs> it's different not a bad set of skills. Thing. It's a different set of yep. skills. So it sounds like when you were little, you you made up a, a narrative that said, "I," and I don't know whether this was generalized to like little boys shouldn't, or whether this was just Ken shouldn't. It was just Ken. Ken just shouldn't me. have feelings. Yep. Ken should be logical and rational and not have feelings. Yeah. And then you just carried that around for at least 40 years. Yep. And then I showed up and messed with the system because I pointed out when you weren't making sense. Yep. So that must have been really dis. That sounds very jarring to yes. somebody who was so sure of, he needed to make sense. A lot of dissonance there. But I must have poked holes in your in in your stories i don't know like a hundred times a and day I, and i had the <laughs> i mean on the one hand Sorry. i had the the honesty to see it on the other hand it happened so freaking often because my thinking was really not my strong suit well, so that um it was really hard to argue against like oh wow I it wrong. was i will give you a lot of credit you would <laughs> notice like wow um you are correct because yeah, the, the logic is flawed. Well, or here's the, the they, thing. Of all the things that I managed to instill in myself, um, the, the, uh, the adherence to the logic itself, I am clearly wrong. I can't argue the logic that I'm wrong when the thing that I'm trying to do is be logical. So I will be, so I'm happy for Mr. Spock then. Thank he you. He had Moy some, and uh, all of the writers on yeah. Star Trek because thanks Gene Roddenberry, because that is not, that is not a small thing to be able to hear that you are, that you're not following your own logic. Cause yeah. what, basically what would happen is we'd be in these conversations where you'd be sharing some story or sharing something that had happened. And I would say, so you just said two contradictory sentences, which one of those things happened? And you would be like, Hmm, oh, hang on. I'm going to have to are contradictory, wait, aren't let they? me look. And that was a process of years of, of hundreds of conversations like that. And one of the things that came to the surface was that you would get caught in that that mode where you weren't totally transparent or you'd start telling yep. a story and you'd be contradictory in the story yeah. when you were out of alignment with your own values, yes. when you're out of integrity. Yep. And for a long time, it appeared that you, um, you kind of wished I would let you get away with it longer. Yeah. But I just well, couldn't. My ego absolutely it. wanted that. Yeah. And the reason Show me I I'm a good person and that and the thing that I have believed in myself about myself for all these decades is true. Yeah. Oh, it's not true? 40 something years. It's right. a little hard to deal with, but bitter pill to swallow. It's a bitter pill to swallow. Um, but 
not swallowing. It just meant doing it. This more. is fascinating. You believed you were a good person and so really wanted to be reinforced that you were a good person. Yeah. So one of the biggest lessons I had to teach you was that you were a bad person yes. as well as a good person. And yep. I loved you because of it. I love you because you are a complicated, complex individual who is flawed and that's great. And I believed at core that I was a bad person who had done bad things. And I showed you that you were a good person too. The Which same I way. I still struggle with a well, little bit. And I, <laughs> so you asked what I didn't trust. It's that. I hear it. You every day, all the time, you show me that you love me with all my good and bad. And there's still part of me that's like, no, you can't possibly love the bad. And you do. So that just happened today. So you come mm -hmm. home and we get caught into this in this little loop where you start yeah. sort of crafting a narrative Ugh. and i feel the distance between us open up and yeah. i'm like so what are you hiding and the answer is nothing, nothing, nothing. Of, of meaning nothing no. relevant but the act of hiding makes it sure look like right? it must be something relevant yeah. and then and then we spend hours untangling that and i don't mind untangling it but sometimes it feels like um, untangling like knots in, in necklaces where you can just spend a whole day working on one little chain. Yeah. And, and result, you get one single and necklace. It's, out. Right. So, and it's fine. It's worth it. You are absolutely gold and you are worth that energy. Oh, thank you. And at the same time, we've had a lot of conversations recently about how it's important that you don't treat me as your therapist, that you don't yes. yep. re require that of me, Yeah. which means you have to do your own work. Yep. You have to show up for yourself and find the support systems that you need. Yeah. And I think this bears maybe a further conversation in another episode about hmm. what does it mean then to have friends? So we're not monogamous, yeah. but we do have, I mean, we have quarantine monogamy going all over oh, the place, yeah. but, um, but we we still struggle with how do you make time for other people? Polyamorous or monogamous, that doesn't matter yeah, right. very much to me. How mm -hmm. do you make time for multiple people to be in your life yeah. as friends, as support systems, as um, you know, what as part of your life? Because you need to have more than just me fueling your your self concept, yes. your beingness. Yep. And so what do we do with that? And guys, especially cisgender guys in particular, there's a, there is a deficit of friendship yeah. going on. Right. I've, yeah. I've heard people refer to it as a, an epidemic of a lack of, of masculine friendships. And I would say, and it's I not contribute just, to it by not responding. And this to isn't just masculine to masculine. Connect. No, like no. you also struggle to connect. I'm happy for you to have, feminine friends that whatever non-binary friends that's but you struggle with it I do. and now i wonder if that increases this habit of not moving towards transparency or if it reinforces maybe i should say the secret keeping yeah. like the secret keeping yeah and the if you don't expose yourself if you don't have friends if you don't or if your friends stay at a certain level of depth yeah that's, uh, that's right like so you have friends thing. You have friends and I like the people that you're friends with, but if you maintain your relationship at a certain depth or, or a certain infrequency, cause you go deep with people. Yeah. But oh, he's, he's chagrined right now. I am. If any of you is listening, he's chagrined and he owes you a text. Sorry, <laughs> sorry Josh. <laughs> I think that, um, you go deep with people, but then you, you, you use frequency as a way. Yep to to protect yourself and i don't mean to make this about something you're doing wrong it's not i, I am feel a this case a study of where you have struggled and, and then and you bring all of your stuff to, to me you. all yep. of it and i it's not that it's too much you're not too much it's that I actually just, I have a business to run and I, I, I'm, sometimes I'm reading books and I have friends to yeah. have and this so, is complicated. I don't know how to say, sometimes I, I don't know how to set my boundary and say, I need you 
to bring some of that Which, Oh, yeah. So elsewhere. this is why you brought relevancy into the transparency conversation to 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 bring it down to a, a, a manageable amount of interaction. Because I don't want you to hold up the entire burden of my internal struggles with whatever. Yeah. Um, but I do need help. Therapists, friends. Um, we all need... Um, we're humans yeah, and, and we're communal people. We're communal people. That's yeah. I, I hear, you know, we're pack animals. We're social creatures. We are, we're communal and we each need to create for ourselves a system around us that works. And when you, when you reach out into your larger world, it's not that it reduces my workload or something. That's not the point. It's that you also have all of this to bring to me right. that is fresh yes. and new and not just the the um, the cycle that you get yourself caught in the loop again again and again yes. and again yep. you instead bring me new ways of thinking it's it's enlivening yeah. i feel the freshness that comes into our relationship yeah. and that makes me want to lean in further so this feels like one of those very clear like shifting away from codependency yes and, and right. shifting out of the moves of codependent, even if you're not like clinically codependent or whatever, Some right? Of those moves. Some of those moves of enmeshment, yeah. shifting away from them and inviting space between the two of us is one of the ways that we foster intimacy. Yeah. Because as soon as yep. we make that space, now there's there's a reason to lean back in. And that makes me excited. And, and reminds me of why I love you. You, because you can manage this, this tension of move apart, there's space, there's distance, there's difference. It keeps me other. And yes. Mm, which is so important I for both love and passion. Right, right. I want there to be, I want my lover to be other. Yeah. And that's a little scary. It is a little scary. But that's where the juice is too, yeah. right? It's, and this, again, not about monogamy or polyamory. This is about no. just allowing each other, encouraging each other, being excited that each other have a life that is fully autonomous and up close, intimate, entwined. Yeah. I, that was one of the first concepts that came up as we were creating our intentional relationship was... Yeah. We were, we had both um, practiced codependency for a long time in yep. other relationships, yep. and we were very nervous to do that again, even though we were so infatuated with each other. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it projections was, galore! Ooh, yeah. Didn't even know who each other were was, really. But in trying to do it different, we kept we kept maintaining this sense of like okay, you need to be independent. I need to be independent. And we missed the point of interdependence, interdependence exactly. where we could count on each other yeah. and make agreements and yet also set boundaries and allow our boundaries to become part of what creates our intimacy. Yeah. That, I mean, that goes back to the very, very, very beginning of our relationship. It was not easy. It's still not always easy. But the thing that I think works the best for me to encourage transparency in you is to remind you that my boundaries are actually, they're mine and they're about what I allow into my space. So you can go ahead and be transparent and be a mess and make a mistake. And those are yours. Yep. I'm not, you don't, you're not pointing that at me. You're not trying to hurt me. Yeah. And I let you be other and maybe you've made a mistake or maybe something isn't exactly how I want it to be. And that's okay. Yeah. Because I already also have my own structure and my own yeah. boundaries and, and I can feel safe and secure in myself. So I can then bridge the gap to you and say, okay, so how, what are we going to do now that you've brought me this thing that yeah. is maybe not working for us? Right. This, none it's, of this is simple. I, I feel no, like it all isn't, of this is but pretty tangly what language. You, what you just said, um, so transparency. What I like about transparency, again, is that it means you can see through something. What is it you're seeing through? Well, it might be my boundaries. Got to have boundaries. 
they're Passing. important and you just described some of the ways that they're important but it's not a i'm not going to take away my boundary but i'll make it transparent well interesting so that you can see what's behind it as what what i believe is um relevant right, so, and what i believe is you know okay so in other words you're saying i don't necessarily get to change what i see in there right 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 but but here it is, but here it is. so here's the truth of me yep. and i i'm displaying it for you and i'm yeah. saying but this is mine mm -hmm. i'm i'm not you know you can bear witness to it yeah but it's not negotiable and you have done a negotiable that fact about me or truth about me at least so for many now. times you have done that exact thing this is true about me and i i would think it was a problem and try to fix it or you know the way i do you'd be like no i'm just telling you it's like oh you're just showing me yeah so this isn't something this to change or fix or touch it's just something to see i will have a deep sadness yeah. i have had depression yes. over the course of my life I, you know, I had a bipolar mother. It's not unusual to have a, a stream of depression um, come out of that. And, and so it's come up over and over again. And so sometimes I will be in that place where it's, I'm deep down and I don't want you to fix it. I want actually to maintain my sense of self and my sense of agency in my own mental health. But I do want you to see how wounded I feel. Mm -hmm. I just want you to witness it. Yeah. and see how deep this pain is. And a place where that comes up is sometimes in sex. Yes. Like, right. oh, oh, my woundedness is visible. And if I can stay in that space and allow you to see it, and you can just view me raw and, and vulnerable in that moment, then, yeah, that is probably the most profound intimacy that I've experienced, other than, you know, being present at the veils of death and birth. I can't think of anything more, more profound. So you're right. The, the presence of the boundaries, the separation combined with the voluntary reaching past those boundaries or, or, you know, well, viewing them, at viewing least. them, yeah. uh, has provided opportunities for deeper intimacy. Well, I'm never sad about that. No. Love okay. That. Thanks for bringing this up. I appreciate it. Yeah. It went in all kinds of places. I didn't know it was going to go, but well, I... that's what everybody is getting from us. This is an, this is a completely unscripted podcast <laughs> in case you hadn't noticed. We came up with this topic, um, I don't know, like three minutes before we started talking. And, you know, we so... haven't talked about that very much. Maybe we'll do a tra trailer soon. Um, a trailer episode, just explaining why we're doing this. Oh, sure. it is a little unusual. Because these are spontaneous bedroom conversations, and you all get an opportunity to listen in. It's uh, an exercise in transparency. Transparency and um, consent. You can always just uh, you don't have you can, to listen. You can flick us off. That's <laughs> can, totally fine. Can fast forward, whatever. Totally fine. But thank you if you've been listening so yes. far. I really appreciate it, and, and thank you for bringing. And this thank you topic for up. having this conversation with me. Okay. Till next time, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton and Ken Hamilton. If you're enjoying our conversation, we would be so grateful if you would drop a rating and quick review so more people will be able to find us. And if you have questions or suggestions that you of things you'd like us to tackle, please send an email to Jolie at JolieHamilton.com. I'd love to hear them. Project Relationship, the entrepreneur's action plan for passionate, sustainable love, is available on Amazon in Kindle, soft, or hardcover versions. This book is a succinct, practical guide to improving your love life. I wrote Project Relationship to give you a set of quick action tools and conversation guides that can transform a mediocre relationship into a fabulous one. These tools are based not just on what Jolie learned in her studies, but on what we actually do to make our relationship thrive. Until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news.